I want to talk about the color curve in Photoshop. Now you've probably used the curve. If you're a photographer working in Photoshop, Adobe Camera Raw, or Lightroom, you've used the curve. Now you've probably used the curve in its luminance value or the face value that you typically see it in without going into the drop down where you go into red, green, or blue, or clicking on the individual uh, little colored dots that you see in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. Now, I want to talk about those colored sections because I don't think we use them quite enough as photographers because they can be quite intimidating. And why are they intimidating? Well, if you've ever gone into the red curve and moved it, you're like, oh, crap, the whole image just turned red. <laughs> this is not good. Well, there's some real power that's hidden in these sections, and I want to break it down so you can really understand it. To do that, I have a series of diagrams, and I even have a test for you at the end. So after you've watched this video, I want to challenge you to see if you can use these color curves to match some colors that I have represented for you. So let's break this down. Let's talk about every little nuance of these color curves and see if we can get down to the bottom of how we can use these and start using them to manipulate the colors in our images more accurately, more efficiently, and even color grade some things to a degree that we weren't able to do before. So let's first start this out by looking at this diagram that I have here. This is broken down into white and black with the gradations of mid-tone values in between. And then also I have it blocked out almost like a zone system around the outside here so we can see how these color curves work. Now let's break down the curve right here in the RGB value or the luminance value of this curve. And then we'll go into the color curves and I'll show you how to use them to manipulate the colors in your image. First and foremost, if you've never used a curve before, moving it up is going to make your image brighter. Moving it down is going to make your image darker. Now, in each one of these sections here, there are areas that are controlling the values in our photograph. So if we do a three-point curve here, this is a point for the highlights, this is a point for the midtones, and this is a point for the darks. This area right here, there's these four blocks. If I move this up and down, that's going to affect the darkest dark areas as we see over here. Okay, now let's reset that. If I go over here, if I move this up and down, it's going to affect my midtones. Okay, and if I move this up and down, it's going to affect my highlights. Now, what you'll notice is that as you grab this curve and move it, when you grab this curve, you'll notice that on both sides of this, you'll also see it increasing here and increasing here. What's happening is as this curve is moving, it wants to try and keep things looking pretty good. So it's not just going to stay stuck on the midtones and just move the midtones. It's going to use those anchor points to slowly adjust that amount on each side. Now, if we didn't have that amount on each side, we delete that and we delete that. Look at the difference there. We have nothing that's governing what happens to the highlights and the shadows as we manipulate the midtone values here. Okay, so. Big takeaway here, this bottom section in the bottom left-hand corner is going to be your darkest darks. These middle four blocks are going to be your mid-tone values, and these blocks up here are going to be your lights. This is going to be critically important when we start talking about the color curves, because this is where you can start manipulating color in just your shadow areas, in just your mid-tone areas, or in just your highlight areas, or all together all around. Now, if we drop this drop down here, we go from RGB to red. You see that we have pretty much the same curve. It just turns red. Drop it down to green. It's the same curve. It's just green. We drop it down to blue. It's the same curve, just blue. So it's, it's showing us our individual values here, our histogram for each one of those individual areas. Now, on an image like this, we're not going to see much variation between the R, G, and B because the whole image is standard across the board. But there are two colors in each one of these sections. It's not just red. It's not just green and it's not just blue. What's actually in each one of these sections is also the complementary color to red, the complementary color to green and the complementary color to blue. Now, Adobe needs to wake up a little bit here. Yes, this is me calling out Adobe, okay? They've done some great things in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom for us with these curves. They need to do it in Photoshop. <laughs> And what I mean by that is if we go over and look at this reference that I've created for you, I've broken down what the curve looks like in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. And what you'll notice here is that these show us a much better representation as to what's going to happen in our curve when we move it. Now, if you've played with the curve enough, this becomes second nature. But to someone who's never seen the curve and you're sitting here in Photoshop wondering what happens when I move this curve, it'd be really nice to have this reference here already built into Photoshop. It's done in Lightroom. It's done in Adobe Camera Raw. I'll get off my high horse. So what we're seeing here, the luminance curve, which is the R, G, and B curve, which is what we're normally used to manipulating, you'll see that it gets lighter up here and darker down here. That's telling us that if we move this curve up, it's going to get lighter. We move it down, it's going to get darker. 
Now, what does that mean for the red? Well, what that means is that if we move it up, it's going to make the image altogether more red. We move it down, it's going to make the image altogether more cyan. Now, if we look at the color wheel, this one's controlling the entire color wheel, right? The luminance channel or the RGB is controlling the entire uh, color wheel. This red is only controlling what happens with cyan and red. The green, green and magenta. The blue, blue and yellow. So now let's take a look at some practical application now that you've seen it like this. Now that you've seen it like this, just try to ingrain this in your memory. When I'm in the red channel or whatever channel I'm in that I'm manipulating in the curve, as I move it up, it's going to give me that color. As I move it down, it's going to give me its complement. So let's take a look at this image here. So in the RGB, this is pretty self-explanatory. We've seen this before. I'm going to go ahead and skip this and go right to the red, green, and blue. So when I go to the red curve here and I move this up, you'll see that I'm moving this up in the midtone values. Therefore, it is making our midtone values more red. I move it down in our midtones. It's making our midtone values more cyan. Where this is going to get tricky is obviously where we have pure black and pure white, since they aren't really, they're not really tonal variations. They are the absolute ends of our luminance and our pixel value. So if I move this up, it's going to make that more red. Now what's, what happens if I grab this curve and I move this down over here? Now it's telling our midtones to become more red and it's telling our shadow areas to become more cyan. I'll move this down over here and that's telling our highlight areas to now become more cyan. So what we've done by doing this curve is we've made the midtones more red, highlights more cyan, and we made the shadows more cyan. What's going on here? Well, we need to talk about two different color principles here because if you've ever used the HSL adjustment layer or something like the selective color adjustment layer, you're not going to get the same results. What we need to talk about is the difference between perceived color and actual color. There are some things in Photoshop that are only going to adjust perceived color. And there are other things in Photoshop that will just give you color all over the place. So let's talk about that now as we break this down. So I'm going to open up this demo here. And in here I have, I'm going to turn this off. So now we have the entire color wheel up here. Above this in our curve, when we go into something like the color red, if I move this up, it is going to make all of those values in this image have more red in them, which therefore shifts the color wheel around and it'll add more cyan to them accordingly. Okay. Now let's take a look at what happens with something like HSL adjustment layer or something like the selective color adjustment layer, which you've seen me talk about before. These two adjustments are modifying what I like to call perceived color or the color for its face value. So if we go into selective color, we're in the color red and we move the magenta up, we're going to make all of the reds have more magenta in them or all of the reds have more yellow in them. Now here's the tricky part though. What you're going to see is if I turn the black and white on, it's not going to do anything. Why is that? That's because selective color works on perceived value of color where color actually exists in the image. It is going to make modifications. The same is true for HSL adjustment layer. If we go into our HSL adjustment layer, we turn the black and white off and we decrease the saturation of everything here. You're going to see that all of the colors get desaturated and grayed out. But if we turn on our black and white, nothing's happening. Why is that? That's because again, this HSL adjustment layer is affecting the perceived value of color or the actual value of color that is available in the image. Where curves differs though, is that curves doesn't care what color is actually specifically in the image. You can go into the red and you can say, I'm going to add more red to this. And that's what's important about understanding the curves adjustment layer here and what's happening in the RG and B values of the curves adjustment layer here. This is the difference in the separation between perceived color or what we perceive as a color and what Photoshop renders a color and the curve, which just says, you know what? This is just about channel color. Let's just give it whatever color we need. I'm just going to put color on here. I don't even care if there's a perception of color here or not. So let's walk through our green here after we've talked about red quite enough. If I move this up, I'm going to get more green in my image. If I move it down, I'm going to get more magenta in my image. And I'll come over here to my blue. If I move this up, I'm going to get more blue in my image. I move it down. I'm going to get more yellow in my image. And I'm actually going to get yellow. There is going to be yellow that is going to come into the image that didn't exist before. This is where you can actually act like a painter. Let's say we wanted to add orange to a specific area in our image. What I would do is I'd come in here and I'd say, move this down and make it more yellow and then come over here into the red and move this up and make it more red. And now we're adding orange where orange did not exist before. This is not perceived color. This is forcing color into the image. 
I want to take a look at this from a practical application standpoint, actually working on an image because you can move these sliders up and down all day long on a diagram. It's not going to help you much until you actually see it in effect. So I have this image here. I can tell by looking at this that I have a slight color cast to this that is more of a magenta or reddish color cast. But let's say I like that in the background, but this foreground little shape here, I want that to change slightly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my quick selection tool and I'm just going to quickly select this area right here as the name implies and move this all around until I get this little feature of this slot canyon selected. Okay, this is a great way to work with your color curves because you can independently color grade in parts of the image without color grading the entire image. But I will show you how to tie them together here in a minute as well. So now that I've got this separated, I'm going to go to select and mask. And in the select and mask, I want to make this a cleaner edge here. So I'm just going to grab my radius and just bump it up. I might increase that quite a bit just so that it makes this mask appear like it's more blended in. You can see that we have this kind of blend on the edge and that'll be okay. Press okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. At this point, I'm not really worried about perfect. So I'm going to go into my curve and I, I'm not going to mess with the lightness or luminance of this at all, which would be our RGB values. I'm going to go into the color blue because I want to make this a little bit more of an orangish color. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some yellow to this. I'm going to act like a painter and I'm going to add some yellow to this. And now you see that I'm cutting through and carving that color cast a little bit by saying, no, I want to force you to be more yellow. Okay. So I'm forcing this area to be a little bit more yellow. And by doing that, it's blending with the underlying values, which are those magenta colors. So we're getting this nice orange color to this. Now I could go in here and say, well, you know what? I kind of like the way that looked in just the shadow areas to have that uh, slightly magenta color cast, but in the mid-tone values, I want that orange. And then let me pull this back up here so that my highlight areas have a little bit more. So I'm kind of blending in. I want the mid-tones to be more yellow, but I want it to taper off as it gets towards the highlights and the shadows. And just for fun, let's go into the color red and let's see what happens as we uh, decrease the amount of red that's in there because that's making it very vibrant and just add a little bit of cyan to tone that down a little bit. Now looking at our before and after, here's the before. Here's the after we've made this ultimately a little bit more orange. And what we're getting by that is we're pushing and pulling the color of the way the eye is looking at the image. We're making this a little bit more subdued, a little bit more of a natural color, which our eye then toward, tends to navigate towards the rest of the colors in the image. Now it could also appear that we do have some color cast in the rest of the image. Now, if I look at this mask, this is a literal mask that is saying you are the only thing that's being affected because you're in white and you are not being affected at all because you're in black. But let's see what happens if we were to go into the mask itself and go into the properties of the mask. Now, if we decrease the density of this, what's going to happen is it's going to give us a blend of the best of both worlds. It's going to say, hey, we like the yellow that's going on in this lower right hand corner, but release some of this black that you have here, make it more of a mid-tone value. And as we do that, you're going to see that this color that we have here is going to slowly work its way into the rest of the image. So essentially, I'm using that to subdue the color grade that is happening in this foreground area and then slowly naturally blend it out to the rest of the image. If I bring it all the way down, it's going to make that whole image have this color grade that I just did because I'm basically telling the mask to be all white. If I move it up, it's going to say, okay, let's do the best of both worlds. Let's give it a 50 50 split. So the foreground really gets that color grade and the rest of it just slowly transitions into the background. Now I chose to do this in a orangish color. I could have chosen any color. And instead of trying to unify the color, I could have used this as an opportunity to offset that color and make it a different color if I wanted to using the color curves. Now I have a challenge for you. Okay. I want you to download this file. And when you download this file, I want you to see if you can make this middle gray that's in the background here, match the individual colors that are all around the image. Now I know that it can be done because I've done it before. I've shown you the reference here and given you an understanding of how the red curve works, the green curve works, and the blue curve works. Um, I've shown you how that color curve is not based on perceived color. It's based on adding color to the image without any perception. And I've shown you in practical application how to move that curve to slightly manipulate it so that you can get different colors. Now it's up to you to see if you can match these colors. I will tell you this, that this color here is gray. It is not a bluish color. It is not a warm gray. You can test that by going into our primary 
uh, color here, clicking on the background, and we see that that is 128, 128, 128. This is gray. This color matches this color. This color matches this color. So I'm going to show you real quick how I want you to challenge yourself to see if you can match all of these colors with different curves. So this is the curve that I have here. I want to try and make this pinkish color up here. How would I do that? Well, the first way that I think of it is, okay, what color is the dominant color that makes up this color? Orangish pink, okay? I would say that that is uh, more than likely going to start with red. So let me go into the red channel. I'm going to move this up. And as I move this up, you'll see that this 50% gray now turns red. Okay, so now we have a pinkish color here. It wasn't pink to begin with. This is more orange. So what would I add to red to make it more orange? Well, then I go over here to the blue because I need yellow. And yellow is on the opposite side of blue. So I'll move this down and I'm getting really close. I'm getting really close. Here's where I'd say to myself, well, I just mixed red and I just mixed yellow and I can't quite get that color there that we have in that peach. It's so close. I mean, it's so close. Let me go into the color green and see if there's one way that I can move this up or down to make it match. And it looks like adding a slight hint of green to this is going to get me really close to that pinkish orange color there. Now let me go into this blue value and see what happens if I manipulate this back. And I'll do this until I slit, I can get that red to be, get that orange to be the color that it needs to be. And it's so close. It's so close. This is a fun little game that you can play with yourself where you're like, oh, can I get it? Oh, it's close right there. Oh, there we go. I'm so close. All right, let's see if we can manipulate this curve here to get a little bit more on those shadowy areas. And Dang, that is really, really close. And if I zoom in here, you can see that is the line there. It is so close, it's not even funny. I would further manipulate this until I got it perfect, but that's what I want you to do. I want you to see if you can match this gray value here that we have in the background to this orange, this green, this blue, and this yellow. Now that you know what you know about curves masks, once you accomplish this task, it'll be a lot easier for you to use it in your workflow on your images when you need that color in specific areas that you just can't get with perceived value color modifiers like HSL and selective color. To reset this so that you can try for the green, just press this little arrow here. It'll reset everything that we just did in this curve. Highly recommend you experiment with this. This is a great visual aid to help you understand these color curves even more. I also want to thank you for taking the time to watch this. I do sincerely appreciate it. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today.